What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. Heavily modded and we are on part three ish. Episode six. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of this because this time we are going all the way. I hope. So just overextending the weapons and clothing room, armor room into that large room there, then rooms have now built, we was working on those at the end of the last episode. This room then will be turned into our storage for our robot type things, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the robots. They're basically like um, sweepers, what you call them, Roombas, but anyway. The reason I like to put them in a room, I, uh, twofold really, I just like the neatness of it, but also if we get drop raids where they drop into the base, they're a bit more secure. They do get wrecked very easily, and you're talking about, I think it's three plus seal per per one per fix, and that's expensive at this stage in the game, so just keeping them safe in a room with a roof, etc. is certainly the best option in my opinion. Wave 21 upcoming in 11 hours, and remember we are going to wave 100, and once we've completed wave 100... We will then build the ship and do the waves for that and leave. Now, there is a lot coming up. I am obviously ahead in, in real life and it gets pretty serious um, to the point where we can completely lag out the game. Though for you, it won't show that as much because I will, of course, edit the video to make it less painful. Uh, one of the attacks that was like, I think, 700 enemies. Um, yeah, that was great to play at two frames a second. Anyway, we're a ways off that, so we're on wave 21, eight hours to go, so let's jump over to this attack and see how it goes. Killbox from the last episode is still in play, of course, that will be significantly upgraded for the future because the waves coming from Winston Waves, uh, as we progress through, certainly through waves sort of 30s and onwards, you need an OP killbox with OP weapons and OP everything in order to survive. And even then, you will lose people. Spoiler. Um, it is inevitable just because they are just as strong as you. If you include weapons into the game that are OP, remember that I will not restrict them from the enemy. So the enemy allowed them to. God help us all. Never mind. Didn't want to bore you with that. So instead, we've moved forward. Now we have 24, four days to go, though. So that was out of the way. Then the last three waves were basically just melee and they were... Yeah, pretty simple at this stage. I, I do know that just melee and lots of them in the future will be problematic for us. And you will see those, but for the just uh, for sending 10 or so melee characters that just get wrecked before they even walk into the kill box is not really entertaining. So extending significantly now the crafting room. You can see I've extended the hospital as well ever so slightly. That, funny enough... If set up correctly, will be all you need. I'm pretty sure I haven't... No, I haven't. In the entirety of play in this series so far, that hospital has stayed exactly the same size. Uh, the only additions to it are the additional items you can add to the hospital beds. Um, once you've upgraded to hospital beds, you can then upgrade the surgical lamps and various other things, as well as making sure that everything is silver, along with the walls as well. Now, the walls technically don't matter if you make them silver, unless you have the mod that gives it the sterile walls, but we're not going to go there. So you can see there are hospital beds, surgical lamps, and kits, but there are no IV monitors or anything, life support monitors and things. Now, remember that the whole point of this and the serious mods that are involved in here is you can automate a lot of things and look forward to that. Uh, even down to when we have these hundreds and hundreds of enemies being killed in a kill box, they will automatically be picked up and transferred through belts into a room where there is an automatic cremator. It's great fun to watch. So continuing on with the plan of attack that we have, of course, the kill box and Rimatronics is our friend. That in itself is what we're aiming to upgrade as soon as possible which means the research that we have and haven't is what we're working to. So I have, I think, four or five researchers on there, two, four, five, yes, five, currently specific to research. All of them 
our priority on research so that we can blast out the research and get all of the items that we need to start with. Rimatronics is our defensive ability. It does have some quite overpowered offensive items as well, like nuclear bombs and artillery railguns. Um, but the nukes are probably as far as we'll go. Just to make sure if we get any of these tiles where they're creating psychic drones or negative things to the map, you would normally have to send out a raid party to deal with that. We can't do that because I've realized now that I can't actually send out small groups because of the gold cube. If the gold cube is missing from them for any certain amount of time, they go ape shit. I'm just going to say it like it is. So I either have to send them all, which is not possible because of Winston Waves, or none of them, which is not possible because that means it will stay forever. So the nukes is you just drop a nuke on them, boom, they've gone off the map. Yes, there's a bit of fallout, but shouldn't bother us too much as long as we don't do it too close to home. And I love the fact that the traders are working because without traders, we'd have far too much junk and we wouldn't be able to get everything that we need all the time, right? So I always like to sell off the drugs. Flake, Ambrosiates, the Yayo, uh, Wake Up, Go Juice, etc. Just to help my people and stop them from getting addicted to it. Because you can't get addicted to something that does not exist. And if they are addicted to it when they come in or get addicted to it, I'll sell it off and they'll have to go through withdrawal. I'm not dealing with drug problems. In very limited circumstances, Luciferium is an option for characters that are comatose and useless. Uh, I will, if I can get a stock of it, do deal with that. But I'd like to say that, of course, we try and stay away from that as much as possible. That includes the uh, beers as well. Just all of that sort of sociable drug drinking stuff. Because it's a bit of a nuisance, I've noticed. Now our miners are working hard to collect us some everlasting steel. We have a little bit, 2k. But we really need to upgrade the base as well from wood where we can. Because wood burns, steel does not. Because of the mod. Remember there is a mod to stop that. And all the mods are in the description. The mods are up to date to where I am live currently in the world. So when I'm recording this episode on the 18th of August... Obviously, I'm way ahead in the game. So you will see mods in there that haven't been showcased yet, but they will be. All of the mods I use, I will use them and showcase them. Else, there's no much point installing them. Rimatronics now, looking at nuclear power. Now, nuclear power in Rimatronics takes a bit of work to set it up. Um, and the fuel rods are a bit of a pain in the arse. Very slow to get loaded in. But that room there that I've just highlighted is for that. I specifically built that for the nuclear power. And that is what I'm going to do. And it means that the solar panels, the windmills will be irrelevant and we can take them down. Even the geothermal, though, is very good. But it has nothing on the nuclear power. And I know from experience that the Rimatronics PPCs, which are the big black batteries that store the energy to use the teslas and the, and the various other items that are provided by rimatronics require a lot of power and the waves that we're going to be getting and the amount of time between them bearing in mind they are going to increase in waves as we move up every 10 levels and from level 50 the gap between them will reduce to the point we're at sort of level 70 80 90 uh, it's down to just two days. So every two days we get a wave of, say, four to five, six hundred enemies at any one time. The energy that we have now is not going to survive that. To keep your OP farm going, your OP kill box going, um, you're going to need OP power. So it does balance itself out. You can't just build loads of Teslas and various other things and then say, oh, I can go for a piss because everything's going to do it automatically. That is not the case. That is not how this mod setup that I've built is intended to be. 
we're going to have sort of 250,000 power watt power coming in at any one time spare. And that is going to be just enough-ish to keep these things running. Without that much power, you will probably survive one wave, maybe two. But the third wave, you will be out of power. So note to self, it's supposed to be difficult. Obviously, there are harder ways of doing it. This is this is the waves idea that we're doing it. There are harder settings that you can do. And let me know if you like this and, of course, what is next. Now, remember, I am going to try and keep up with some of the characters. Characters that are pertinent to the task. I mean, Pex at the minute is probably the most pertinent. And then Wood, which is Joanne Wood, which is the member you guys, if you survive the series, will continue on to other series storylines. Hopefully, I'll try and make it make sense. Uh, if we go into medieval or something like that, then maybe not. But for somebody to go into the medieval times, there would have to be something mystical or magical in order to appear and make sense. This is just the giant furnace that I'm trying to use to get rid of clothes, weapons and stuff quickly because they back up and as we continue when you if you can imagine you've got 600 enemies that you've got 600 weapons and 1200 pieces of clothing etc it becomes a right mess though this furnace turns out to be a bit crap in my opinion um, because it still needs to be fueled with wood i would much rather wait for the industrial stuff to level up a little bit which is the whole purpose of us rushing the research uh, and then we can get the auto crafters which come along with auto smelters and auto assembly lines that will do this for us uh, in, in literal tenths of seconds. Just pushing out an extension now to the left of the base there through the double wall that was for defence. That is going to be where I move the farms to. Hopefully have some animals in the future. You can see a lot of that is also land that is rich. Fertile rich, which means we'll get 150% bonus on the growth. However, there is the um, floor mod as well, the tilled floor, I think it's called, which gives 200% anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. So we'll go with some 7 by 15 farms, four of which um, we do have the ability to put soil down where we're missing it. Uh, I think we've researched that. What we're after actually is food at the minute, either corn or potato i don't actually care it doesn't matter what the vegetable is um we're using human meat so as long as we can do that and create the meals we are good we are growing heel root just to make sure we've got plenty of um medicines even though they're cheap they're better than nothing and then devil strand of course because it's good to use for drapes and chairs etc but it's also a good sellable uh, for profit in the future because it takes so long hay is there but i'm going to get rid of that because to be honest the only animals i'm interested in are probably going to be more predator carnivorous to be trained to go with some of our guys though we will need to capture some food for them and i know that sounds ridiculous but instead of trying to maintain meat uh, in the animal pen i'd rather just capture some alpacas some sheep some rabbits uh, keep them in the area where the predators are and let me in. So yeah, just going around, pretty it up a little bit. I do probably over the top, just with a bit of bit of path around everything, just so I know what I'm doing. And again, this is up until the point that we can automate this. The two garden bots you can see are already going like the clappers to get the farms ready. But the industrial mod does give you proper drones that will maintain their own fields, like tractors um, and that way you never need to bother about anybody again at that point we'll delete these garden bots because the bots these side these sort of bots anyway can cause lag if you have a lot of them uh, and the drones from industrial uh, have no lag at all as you can see over there the uh, room that i extended for the store in the weapons and stuff is already overflowing so i'm going to need a better solution uh, i don't know what that is quite yet but of course, we definitely need to do that. The farms that I'm ripping up now will then allow me to move the bedrooms over to give everybody much bigger bedrooms. That will make them much happier and give the ability to add things to them, decorations and stuff. Because as these characters progress, any of them getting any sort of royalties will need bigger bedrooms, fancier bedrooms and a lot of furniture to go in there. Okay, so here we go with wave 24. 86 enemies coming in, which is quite a lot. Um, 
especially when there is only two, four, six, eight of us defending. But again, we already have some Teslas in place. A couple of the Inferno type statues as well. Yes, they will go around and attack random crap. It's fine, to be honest. While they're doing that, um, they're not attacking the actual point where my people are. And then, of course, closer to that, a mechanical cluster as well. Lovely. This is, uh, yeah, wonderful. Perfect example, though, of just because Winston Waves is doing waves, there is other things happening as well, depending on your difficulty level, which ours is blood and whatever it's called. I think it's, either the, I think it's one off the hardest, if I remember rightly. Um, it was putting it on the hardest caused a lot of issues with the, the mod sending like 2,000 people and the game couldn't load it so yeah so annoyingly though they're a bit slow so let's speed that up for your sake and in they come into what is the quote unquote kill box now our guys are back there as you can see they are there to do a job and shoot the pillars are there to defend as best I can and then there's traps right at the last line the idea, though, is the Teslas are supposed to do all the work. Now, as long as they don't run out of power, they will continue to single target everything that they can. Setting fire to the odd one, which is good. But, yeah, this is getting a bit messy. We're only sort of a fifth of the way through, and we've already lost two Teslas out of the eight. The wall's dropping reasonably quickly, and another one is down. Grenades and rocket launchers are a problem for us, of course. It's expected. That Tesla there has actually leveled up but been destroyed, so we've lost its ability as well. They are pushing up to the front line, and now we're getting into melee attacking, which isn't something I'm a fan of, but it is something that I've prepared for, which is why they have swords. Three Teslas remaining, and luckily the Teslas will ignore the shields there that are blocking projectiles. All of the Rimatronics equipment will ignore those shields, so the Teslas, the lasers, etc. As it stands, this could be going a lot better, but it also could be a lot worse. We haven't yet uh, lost, anyway. Um, you can see there's a lot of the fire poppers going off to stop this fire from getting out of hand, which actually is a beneficial, and there we go. They gave up, and they're going to run away. Now, skill boost would be a good option there, or food and medicine. Yes, skill boost. Just to give everybody a boost of two levels in everything there, which is definitely worth it. Um, remember they do still fight while they're running off they're not I mean it makes sense right you're not just gonna run off and let everybody shoot you in the back so don't be tricked into thinking as soon as they give up that everybody's safe what we do need to do now is get everybody into the hospital that we can people that can't walk there themselves like McMahon in there we need to rescue them and get them in make sure you click through as I'm doing now and I'm looking for how long they've got left before they die so that person there is bleeding to death in nine hours concentrating then on those people first whoever's dying the quickest gets the medicine first or actually no medicine because what I'm gonna do is tend to them without medicine to stop them bleeding so basically just stick a sock in it and then we'll take them to the hospital and deal with them at another day we do have a decent amount of uh, well, that sucks to be them. We do have a decent amount of doctors, so we're good. And yes, as they flee, they flee straight through the mech cluster, which reduced that a bit for us as well. Though, the mech cluster itself is yet another problem we now have to deal with. And we don't really have a kill box anymore, because all of the traps are triggered. And the Teslas, which actually are very good against mechanoids, because it stuns them. Uh, we lost six of the eight. So now everybody is crawling, desperately trying to get back to a hospital bed to survive. And it's a bit of micromanaging. We do have now five days before wave 25, which is the boss wave. And you can see the numbers coming in on wave 25, 196. So that is more than double what we've just struggled to take out. And this is what I mean. So now we need to get our guys... Up and about, they're not going to be fixed, but they're going to be patched up to the point that they can walk about. And as you can see, I'm micromanaging that now to make sure nobody dies, because the game won't do that for you. It's not that clever. So micromanaging all the ones that are going to die. As soon as you get the yellow writing um, conditions, need tending, the, the red writing means they're going to die, of course. The yellow writing means they are not going to die, though infections and other things could happen after the fact. 
But we've got 4.8 days to get these guys up and running. We've got 4.8 days to get the defences built again. Now, we do have the robots to help us out there. So, it could be worse. But we need to do it all, and we need to do it now. Okay, so as we're at the end of the episode, I didn't want to leave you on that cliffhanger anyway, and it turned out to be pants. Both the that wave and the wave 26 were just melee, and it was a bit crap. Uh, it was it was boring. So instead, we can see we've had this giant one come in now, and you can see I've adjusted the kill box ever so slightly in that time because I did have a decent amount of time. I mean, obviously, it was 10 days' work, 10 days' worth because the waves were just a bit pathetic. Uh, wave 26. I don't know what happened. There was a lot of cowards in the in the group. So they actually... Uh, I only got about 25% of them and they fled. So yeah. This one, however, not so much. Apologies for lack of in-game sound as well. I've just realised as I'm recording this that I seem to have missed that. So apologies for that. However... Um, it's probably for the best because this would have been very loud. These are the guys that breathe fire a lot. Now, this actually helps me, I think, because they're setting fire to the kill box. Uh, they're setting fire to those turrets there that are pretty crap. I'm not going to lie. They are rubbish. And when they blow up, they cause more damage to my base than the enemies anyway. Uh, you can see the start of a nuclear reactor up there. Don't worry. That is just the building. It means nothing. The actual infrastructure to make it work is to be done and you will get to see all of that i will show it i promise but yeah moving into this they're basically setting fire to the whole point of where they want to walk so they're going to burn themselves to death all the time they're doing that and burning themselves to death uh, they're getting electrocuted and shot out by my guys so what could possibly go wrong And there we go. And for the eagle eyed viewers, you would have noticed that was wave 27. And as soon as we finished, it waved 29. I don't know what happened to wave 28. But we're going to continue because it did it, not me. I'm not sure if there is an ability where you can get lucky and skip wave. I have no idea. I don't believe so. But And as you saw there, they actually, uh, about 40%, 50%, again, they gave up. So they're giving up quite easy. Um, and I don't like that. So I'm going to change some settings to make them a bit more ballsy. And I can add, uh, I can't remember what the setting is. But there is a pain threshold and a fear threshold that I will increase so that they do not um, run so easy. Because although you would expect that, I mean, the, the mechanoids are great because they never give up. They fight to the last one and then even that will continue to fight. The, the people are obviously more like logical. Um, but especially these magic ones that are breathing fire, I feel like they should just not give up. Though, if they can breathe fire, they should be able to withstand the fire. And it turns out that they burn themselves to death, so that's quite embarrassing for them. But now is the five days until the next wave, wave 29. And we've got a lot of cleanup to do. We've got a lot of picking up all this crap. Anybody we can hopefully try and capture. I'm not after... Uh, people per se but i am after cattle for the grinder which is the prison and then we can use that in the future for various other things whether it be steel parts from them or or take their brain cores out to use for mech linking um, as it stands though we are now at time and we will end the episode here so thank you very much for watching if you like the episode please click like any comments are welcome as always and don't forget to subscribe to see the absolute massacres that are coming in the future. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.